The main reason I got into cooking in the first place was cooking for people. Like the feeding of people was what got me interested in cooking. Today is a fun one. We've all made a steak. We've all made a great steak. We've all made a not so great steak. I wanna get into appetizer territory. I wanna get into impressive territory, CJ. Today I wanna show you guys a fantastic steak Appeti I don't wanna just call it an appetizer. This is like a meal. Like I would probably eat three or four of these and be satisfied with dinner. Uh, it's succulent steak, a creamy horseradish sauce, a little arugula. It's just stunning. It's something you can take to a holiday party and be like the star of the show. It's pretty much what I'm trying to tell you. Well then do it. Go then. Wrong show. Let me show you how to do it. We're gonna start with one of my favorite ingredients, a gorgeous fatty ribeye. Now these are pretty thick and that's key for this dish because we want a nice medium rare at the end. So we're gonna hit these with a bit of olive oil and the black stone blackened. If you haven't seen this, it's full of flavor and that activated charcoal gives a stunning presentation. Now I've got my black stone set to stun, high, high heat. Make sure it's smoking before you put your steaks down. Add a bit of oil and throw those steaks down. We want that Maillard to happen as quickly as possible. That's the crust forming so that we maintain a nice medium rare on the inside. While those are cooking, let's get to our sauce. This is very, very simple, a no cook, no mess, no fuss, everything in a bowl. We're gonna start with mayonnaise, uh, right over the top of that, some grated Parmesan cheese, a little bit of prepared horseradish, some lemon juice, boar's zen, if you've never had it, it's easy. You just spoon it in there and it adds a ton of flavor. Uh, I'm also gonna add a bit of salt and pepper and some water. We want this not quite a drizzle, but we also don't want it to be as thick as mayonnaise. So use the water to get the consistency that you like. Once the steaks are finished, let's pull those bad gorgeous. Oh, look at these things. CJ, Money, bro. Ooh, love looking at that. Pull them off and let them rest just a bit. Uh, we're gonna cut up our baguette. Pull the beef fat back into the middle. Ooh, bring it back in. See, we're toasting and beef fat. Yeah. We're not losing it, we're yeah. using it. Huh? Uh, Anyone? Uh? Toast that bread in the beef fat uh, on both sides. Now you don't wanna take this to a cracker. You still want a little uh, bite in the middle. So you want crispy outside, but still a soft inside. It'll be nicer for your guests later. Once you've thrown all of your bread on your blackstone cutting board. These new ones are awesome, by the way. They work as a, a platter, serving this platter, or a cutting board. A really, really nice. Uh, let's add some arugula down to the bottom. Arugula is very peppery. Some would call it a savory green. It's got a lot more flavor than most lettuces, and it, it's really gonna add a new dynamic to this dish. The flavor is, is fantastic. Uh, let's throw some of our steak over the top. You can do two pieces or one piece, depending on how big you cut your crostini. That's the fancy word for what we just did uh, with the bread, if you were wondering. I, I if you're taking wondering. notes, pencil and paper out. Uh, now we're gonna hit it with some of that creamy sauce. Now this, again, you want to be almost drizzle. I guess I would call this drizzle. Would you call it? It's a drizzle. Like drizzle. Yeah, it's just sexy and gorgeous and wonderful. So pour that over the steaks. You don't wanna go too heavy. Uh, a little dabble, do ya? As my good old buddy, Mr. Bruce Mitchell would say. Uh, we're gonna garnish with a little bit of chopped chives. Now I like chives here mostly for their color and their size. If you went green onions, it's just a little too big. It starts to look like a baked potato, they're, right? They're harder to manage yeah. when it comes to a garnish. Chives are cute. Like this. Chives are cute. Add the chives. And the last thing I want to do is a little bit of balsamic glaze. Now we have tons of savory going on right now. Yep. It, the sweet balance to the savory is going to make this a really pleasant dish to eat. People are going to freak out and they're going to love it. Plus it's gorgeous. Look at that, CJ. Dude, it looks Stunning. Amazing. Dude, that's the one I was going to take. No. Of course it is. So here's the thing. Uh, I don't think this is beard friendly. Nah, dude. That is a strong nah, dude. But I'm going for it anyway. You gotta go for it. Come on. Everything is savory. The horseradish is really punching through with that fatty steak. That little bit of sweetness. That's what carries the flavor right on into... Flavortown? No. Okay. Asta picanha. Don't get any on ya. Am I right or am I right, CJ? Nope. Nope. It's kind of good. Nope. Good news, dad news? Good news, dad news. Today I want to show you kind of like an unsung hero. I don't know, recently it's become quite a sung hero. <laughs> Did you say that? I don't know. Uh, there are some cuts of meat that get a bad rap and then all of a sudden some chef makes it and all of a sudden everybody wants it. Uh, typically a very inexpensive cut. It is fantastic. I'm going to show you picanha. Very simple, very easy. Don't be intimidated. We're going to do a chimichurri. Think of this like a like an appetizer or a, a carnivore diet. Just all meat. All meat all the time. Let me show you how I like to do it. Picanha. Pecan, yeah. I'm just singing. It's an unsung hero. I just sang. Oh, maybe it should be unsung. Oh, another one. Sing. 
So Picanha, it's, it's kind of most recognizable for this. CJ, can you see this beautiful fat cap? Right. This is glorious. Now, uh, in past episodes, we've talked about the different kinds of fats in beef. This one is its own thing because this is like, it's like gold. Now, the magic of picanha is that contrast, that beautiful, thick piece of fat. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our knife. We're going to make these long little cuts. Sometimes it's called a culotte steak at this point. Uh, should we do two or let's do three of these? Should we do three long slices? So bit. I'm going to show you a fun way to cook picanha. Uh, we're going to sear it, right? So we're not going low and slow, but we do want CJ, look at all that. We do want to render out some of this fat. Now you don't have to eat the fat. This is something also uh, good to remember. The fat is flavor. So it's going to essentially be basting itself. That's what makes this cut so amazing. I'm a big fan of this presentation. Tell. So we're going to work here, bend this little one in half. Hey, no, we're making these little moons or semicircles. I'm going to cut through right here on the side all the way through and we're going to have it keep its shape is this uh in like a brazilian place is it uh like hanging beef beautiful yeah. yeah yeah you'll see it like that but see now we're getting to a more fun presentation so let's do that again uh, also this is one of those things too you don't have to like go over the top to be oh, i'm gonna toot my own horn here <laughs> to be impressive but little bits of technique here and there really elevate our presentation uh, and we eat with our eyes first everyone knows that so this is a fun little trick uh, i'm gonna do a two stage seasoning whenever i do two different seasonings you uh whenever you do it at home always start with your salty first so i'm going with some of our blackstone black end now this is both for really fantastic flavor really unbelievable color two stage means the first one is the salt the second is the sweet or the heat in this case uh, we're using the citrus garlic mojo which is sweet and heat the reason is because the salt creates osmosis that means the moisture starts to wick out as it sits and then the sweet and the heat creates that caramelization on the outside don't be afraid to, to go hard in your seasoning. I don't know if you noticed in the past, but when you do cook hunks of meat, some of the seasoning gets left behind on the griddle, which is okay. It doesn't mean you're losing it. It means it's cooking in it. Uh, I'm going to turn my griddle on like I should have 15 minutes ago. Now, <laughs> glad you caught that, CJ. Now, uh, here's what you want. You want really, really high heat. So I'm going to wait a minute or so uh, for that to get hot. But once your griddle does get hot, we're gonna add some oil. We want it smoking, smoking hot. One side of my griddle, screaming hot. The other side of my griddle is off. So we'll have some residual heat to play with. But once you see that fat, it almost starts rendering immediately because it's so thick and succulent and juicy. Oh, awesome. That's what we want. That's what you wanna see. Uh, now, while that's cooking, we've got a bit. Let's get to our chimichurri. 30% Italian parsley, 70% cilantro. Totally a personal preference. Chop it up nice and small. You could do this in a food processor, but it just has a much more lovely, elegant look when you do it yeah, on the like cutting board. Uh, we're going to do the same thing with some garlic. Chopped up nice and tiny. Um, let's take some limes. I want to zest them before I juice them. I, I also like to add a little heat again to your preference. If you don't like it, leave it. Uh, red pepper flakes. Just for me, it adds that extra little, that little one-two punch. A bit of salt and pepper and a decent amount of olive oil. I do want to do one last little thing here. Uh, I've got some rye. Uh, use whatever kind of booze that you like. Uh, but I brought my steaks back over to the hot side. Now I'm gonna, we're gonna glaze, right? This is called flambe or flaming. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that beautiful rye that and be, flame, be careful. Take your lighter give it a one, two. So essentially let this burn. Don't touch it. Let that fire. Look at that. Just let the fire kind of crisp that last little bit of flavor up on. And that's all we needed. Uh, now, again, this is one of those like kind of party moves, right? You pull this out. You probably don't want to serve it just like this because everyone else is going to have to cut it. But I think this is super cool. I'm a fan of height. Now, we always talk about uh, elevating our flavors, you know, paying attention to our salties and our savories and paying attention to our sweets and our acidity. So I'm going to take that chimney and let that just hang out right on top. Oh, there it goes. Oh, that oil dripping, oh, dude. Yeah. I would say if you're throwing a tailgate, this is too easy not to do and not to be super impressive. So a few weeks ago, uh, I did a, a simple week. Is that what we call it? A simple weeknight meal? Yep. But it's like, kind of like, what do you do on a Tuesday? What do you do on a Wednesday? When stuff, you do, you want- Extra stuff you got hanging around. You know, 
Few ingredients, you want it to be quick. Today I'm gonna to show you a steak sandwich that is simple, not a lot going on, but a ton of flavor. Definitely perfect for an easy weeknight meal. I'm gonna start with tip number one. You've heard me say this one before if you've been watching the show. Uh, instead of a thin steak, get a thick steak. This is a very thick ribeye. I love the fat. Now I'm going two stage seasoning here. I'm gonna do steakhouse first. I'm also gonna go with some of the blackened. So this is, a, it's a really great steak seasoning, but it's the activated charcoal that gives it the color. We're gonna get that fantastic char, that Maillard reaction. Now my griddle is set to stun. It's smoking, smoking hot. That is what we want because we don't want this to be well done. We want this to be nice and beautiful, medium medium rare if you really must. Uh, we're gonna cook that down pretty much in its own fat. Add a touch of oil if you want, uh, but if your Blackstone is nice and seasoned, you're not gonna have any issues with this sticking. Uh, now it's time to get the rest of it. Let's get to our sauce first. Just like the steak, not a lot of moving parts. Uh, I have three ingredients. Four, prepared horseradish, mayo, Worcestershire, and lemon juice. Love it. It's a great combo. It's, it'll sing a song. A similar combo. Yeah. And it's money. Last thing I want to do is add a touch of seasoning. Good idea, dude. Hey, th thanks. Hey, thanks, guy. Uh, now, this is a really versatile sauce. No matter what kind of beef dish you're doing, this sauce is all kinds of money. Uh, what else are we do? I have an onion. Is it time to flip yet? No, it doesn't sound like it. Huh. doesn't right. sound like it yet. Beef fat starts to make this sound. It says... I'm on the box. Oh, dang it, wrong show. Uh, I've got a little bit of sweet onion. Uh, I'm gonna do a little julienne here. Just a little, little slice, a little cut. Caramelized onions and beef, bro. See, you knew where I was going. Exactly. There is something magical about the aroma and flavor of sweet onions cooking in savory beef fat. I mean, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to explain it. So I am gonna flip, and hopefully we'll have some of this fat rendered out. Oh, and we do. Show me. New area. Oh, yeah. That's what we're talking about. This is why you want that heat setting all the way up really, really hot because we get this browning, this Maillard reaction, and that's going to be the start of the show. However, look at this. All of this fat. See all this? The co star. Beef flat. Beef flat, you know, or beef fat. Let's throw our onions right down in that. Now, something else that happens with beef, uh, the protein will leave behind, it'll stick a little bit, and that's called fond and it's the caramelized proteins, which are loaded with flavor, are still down. Now, I don't typically do this because I heard CJ complaining about it the other day. Just a touch of water on my onions, not because I want to steam them. A little bit, you saw how little that was? Very little. Very little. Only because I want to bring up, watch, all this stuff from the steak. Those, little, that, those are little bits of seasoning, all the crunchy goodness that was sitting there. That's my seasoning. So I don't even need to season my onions. No oil, nope. the seasoning and the fat from the Beef steak. fat and that leftover seasoning from the steak. Uh, all right, so now you know what we gotta do, CJ? Chill. Nothing, I mean, I guess we could use a bread knife, cut up a couple of hoagies, make two sandwiches. Once that steak is exactly where we want it, we're gonna pull it off and let it rest. Let's go ahead and slide our onions off to the slightly cooler side, uh, and let's add our bread to start toasting. Now, once we've rested, here we are. Uh, you don't wanna serve a giant steak. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut it up into smaller pieces. Again, don't do it first. If you wanted, you could stop right here and have steak bites. But you wouldn't wanna cut up the steak really tiny to begin with because then you're just gonna have everything overcooked and that's not bueno. It seems convenient, but you lose in the you, long run. 100%. Uh, this little bit is gorgeous, as is. Uh, so cut all of that up. Uh, we're gonna pull the bread off and let's make little two little piles here. We're gonna add our cheese to start melting over that beautiful, beautiful beef. Uh, now it's time to build. Let's put some of our sauce, some arugula, some onions, some steak, my friends. Like this is the part of the magic trick where people at home don't realize how simple everything was because they look at this finished thing like, oh my goodness, this is not a Tuesday evening. This is a, this is a restaurant. What am I, someone's restaurant in their backyard? Yep. I don't think I mentioned it, not beard friendly. <laughs> oh yeah. Like this is insane. Well, I mean, okay. I didn't say it was a clean Tuesday night. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't say you might need a bath after. Oh, Good. but I mean, night. All yep. the yeses. I'm gonna get down to this. Some Here we go. Mm. Oh, yeah, not clean, man. Mm. I'm not making this around. Technique to take away. Thick steak so that when you cut it later, you can still have that medium 
medium rare, but get that second sear. Super fun. A lot of us have made steaks that we really, really love, and the technique doesn't really change a little bit depending on the cut that you're cooking. Today, I wanna focus on sauce game. You hear that, CJ? Sauce game. Sauce game is how you take it to the next level. I'm gonna show you guys how to do a very simple but elegant red wine reduction sauce on our fillets. It's gonna be fantastic. Some potatoes, some asparagus, all the things a growing boy needs. Mm -hmm. Yep. Go to CJ's show for those movie quotes. Let me show you guys how I like to do it. Today, I have these gorgeous fillets, but I don't want to get to these just yet. I'm gonna get my potatoes going first. So I have some little yellow potatoes. I'm gonna cut these in half. If they're really big, you can cut them in quarters. So let's go ahead and get our griddle up to medium heat, add a bit of oil in all of those gorgeous potatoes. I'm gonna hit those with just some of our steak seasoning. The Chicago steak is fantastic. If you haven't had it, really large granules of fantastic seasoning. Give that a toss, uh, put a dome over it to let those start cooking. Now let's get our sauce cruising. Now typically, I would make my steaks on the griddle top, but I'm gonna show you guys a really cool technique. We're gonna talk about fond. It's like that. We're gonna get that to high heat. Now let's put some olive oil down. We wanna get this to smoke point. Uh, so just a touch of oil, high heat. We're gonna get to our steaks in just a minute. So what fond is, we'll talk about it more in a minute when you can actually see it. It's the caramelization of protein that sticks to the bottom of the pan that we reintroduce back into our sauce. I've seen it, I like it, let's do it. Okay, uh, before we get there, I'm gonna take some garlic. Let's go ahead and smash these. Do you ever, do you do this CJ? Sure. It's such an easy, simple thing to do and it opens up so much more of the oil in the garlic. It gives us more garlic flavor, which is fantastic. Now, while that oil is coming up to temp, let's go ahead and season these gorgeous fillets. Now, I'm actually gonna do two part seasoning. I'm gonna start with my Chicago steak. I'm also using our, using? I'm using our blackening. Can you see that one? This one is gonna give us a lot of flavor, but more importantly, a lot of color. There's some activated charcoal in there. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. So cool. We wanna sear these really, really high heat for two reasons. One, this is a thick steak, so we want a gorgeous crust on the outside, but we also want some of that protein to hang out in the pan. We want it to stick around in the pan. Once we have that stunning sear, I mean, you can see, CJ, look at this. That sear is pretty unbelievable. Let's peek at our potatoes real quick. You know what, add a little bit of fresh rosemary in there and pop the dome back on. This just gives it some more beautiful flavor. Now, once our steaks have that amazing crust, you can see it. You can absolutely see it. Now, we're very, very rare still. Uh, you know, let's take our dome off of our vegetables. These are looking really, really good. Let's scoot them, uh, let's scoot them toward the back. Let these keep cooking. Now we're gonna finish our steaks on the griddle top. Now usually I would do these on the griddle top completely, but I'll show you what we're gonna get in just a second. So let's pull our steaks off. Oh, can you, CJ, just, just gander. Gandering. Gander. Let's bring these over. We're gonna finish these on the griddle top. Now look inside the pan, CJ. Do you see this right here? This right here, this is fond. Fond is the leftover little bits of meat. So I'm gonna take my garlic, we're gonna throw it right in the pan to toast. Uh, let's go in with just a touch of butter as well. Now this isn't gonna take long. That garlic cooks really, really quick. There's a little bit of beef fat in there, toasted garlic, magic. All right, now we're gonna go in with just a bit of wine. Now today I'm using some Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, but you can use any kind of wine that you like. A heavier wine for me is better. Now we're deglazing. So all of that fond, I don't know if you can hear me, it's pretty loud. All of that fond, that meat, the leftover meat stuff, now it's coming up into the liquid. Oh, wow. It's already getting velvety. Beauty, beauty. We're also gonna add some beef stock. We're gonna do about equal parts, a little bit less beef stock than wine, a little bit more wine than beef stock. I'm also gonna add some peppercorns. Now these are whole peppercorns. That's really, really good. I'm also gonna do just a touch more of that steakhouse seasoning. Now turn your heat up to high uh, and let this reduce. You want it to look almost like syrup, right before syrup. You want it to be a thick, beautiful sauce. Let's go ahead and slide our steaks off the heat. Now this is the cool side. You know, let's go ahead and slide these potatoes up underneath our dome. So these are still gonna maintain their heat, uh, but they're not on direct heat, which is nice. A bit more oil uh, right over here. Now typically if I was cooking my steak all the way on my griddle, I'd have that beautiful fat. Uh, let's crank this up to high heat and go with our asparagus. Now is the point where we are going to monte au beurre. 
Um, Monte au beurre is a French technique and it means mounting, or it stands for mounting the butter. So I'm gonna take some unsalted butter and right when it hits, we're gonna start whisking it in. Now this is going to slightly emulsify. It's gonna become one with the sauce, but it's also gonna thicken it up and add a really, really rich flavor. All right, I like to slice. Uh, you can serve your steak whole as one large piece, but I like to slice it kind of um, in more bite-sized portions, and then you can splay it out a little bit better. It looks like the presentation's a little nicer, I think. All right, let's go with our potatoes first. Now these have been on the longest. Let's check on our asparagus here. Now we're gonna take our steak and lay it right over the top, just like that. Kind of like fan it out. Show our beautiful work. Look at that. Here we go. Star of the show, our sauce. Now we're gonna take a big spoon, just drape it right down the steak. Let some of it hit the pan, the pan or the plate, both of those. Oh yeah. Crazy rich, crazy flavorful and pretty impressive. I mean, if you make this for your date night or for your friends, I mean, it's one of those things where you make it, it wasn't as hard as you thought it was gonna be and it comes out perfect every single time. It is no fuss, no, no muss, no fuss. I don't know the phrase. It's delicious. That's the phrase. I had a fun idea today to do a take on a recipe CJ did that was a take on a recipe that I, am I saying that right? I don't know, but how convenient. Steak bites, how convenient for all of us. I'm gonna show you guys a fun tailgating recipe. We're gonna do blue moon lemon honey glazed steak bites. Is that what I'm gonna call it? Sure. That's what I wanna call it. It's gonna be fantastic and delicious and super easy. I'm gonna show you some techniques on how to crush your steak bite game. Let me show you how to do it. So the first thing we're gonna start with is obviously our steak. Well, maybe it's not obvious. What we are gonna do is a big hunk of meat. I want a big ribeye. I'm definitely using ribeye. That's, I think, the best one. Uh, I want two, two, two inches thick, two and a half inches thick, and we're gonna season heavily. Uh, I'm gonna use my Chicago steak and my blackened seasoning. Now this is gonna give us two things, kind of two different kinds of seasoning, uh, but it's also gonna give us some really beautiful color in the activated charcoal. We don't want to cube it up first. We're gonna cook it whole, we'll cube it later. Now I've got my griddle set to high. This is, I think this is key for me because I want a medium rare, medium steak bite. Uh, so I've got my griddle set up to high heat, medium high heat. I want my oil smoking hot. I'm gonna take my steak and we're gonna put it right down over here. Now, I, th I think you can tell on camera, oh yeah, how thick this steak is. This, this is probably a steak for two. Dude, it's a monster. It's a big, it's a big steak. Uh, so now let's get to our glaze. Uh, I'm gonna start with some honey. Now the sweetness is gonna play a big part later. I've got some lemon juice. Uh, I wanna add some fresh thyme. Now I'm not pulling the leaves off the thyme. I'm leaving, leaving them in there. Now what's gonna happen is the oils are gonna come out of the herbs, but most of the leaves, like 90% of the leaves are gonna stay on the stems. Now is where we come to our beer. Now we've got some Blue Moon. Uh, the reason I'm using Blue Moon is because it already has a lot of those citrusy flavors, and that's kind of what we're playing off of. So just a splash. Now this is gonna reduce once it hits that screaming hot flat top. Now we can mix that in. Now this is gonna become our glaze later. Once we have that beautiful crust, that's when we're gonna flip. Now, I'm kind of a multi-flipper kind of guy when it comes to a piece of meat this big, so get a good crust on all sides. If you wanna get that fat side and it's not standing up straight, you can always push it over to the side, lean it on the edge of the griddle, uh, but we definitely want crispiness on all sides. So think three to four minutes, depending on how thick your steak is, per side until it looks flawless and gorgeous. At this point, our steak has been through some stuff gonna need to take a little nap. It's gonna need to hang out and chill just a little bit. Uh, but you can see, I mean, it's it's ready to eat uh, until you cut into it. This thing is still super, can you see how spongy that is, CJ? Oh yeah. Super, super rare still. Oh, but so delicious. Oh, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be really good. Now is, is the part that it just sucks. We're gonna have to let it rest. Just gotta be patient. We're talking five maybe even 10 minutes. So we're almost there, we're like 99% there on our rest. Let's go ahead and cut up our sweet yellow onion. Big, large chunks of onions, throw that right down into the leftover beef fat. Hit that with a bit of the Chicago steak and let it start cruising. We want caramelization, but we don't want it to be too soft. Now it's time to cut our steak. Now here's the beauty of the huge 
two inch steak, right? We cut it and it's still very rare. Now we get to cut it into individual chunks. Now, once you have your cubes, bite-sized cubes, toothpickable cubes of beef, throw that right onto the onions. Now it's time for our glaze. Now these will finish cooking at like medium temp, maybe medium rare, depending on how long you go. Add some of that beautiful liquid to the top and you'll see it start to reduce really, really quick. Now the honey and the sweetness in there, it's gonna start glazing. You'll see it start to get real shiny. Give it a few tosses, add a little bit more if you need to, give it a few tosses, and that's pretty much it. Um, plating this is, it's, it's hard to, you know, make this look chef-y. It's a pile of meat, CJ. And a pile of meat is good. It's steak and onions. That's right. Pile of steak and onions. But what you can do is serve it with a delicious beer because nothing goes better with steak than beer, especially when we it's cooked story. in it. So it's at our blue moon, a beautiful slice of orange and that, my friends. That's, that's tailgate to the next level. Crazy, Perfect. crazy good. Steak bites. Super fun, great tailgate food. You can make a lot for a lot of people in the same exact amount of time. The beer and the citrus keeps everything bright. The honey adds that sweetness that beef fat needs. The Blue Moon carries it over the top. That one was, I'm, I'm, I'm not sharing. Okay. I'm sharing, I'll share, I'll share later. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out. Uh, that's all I got. If you are new to the channel, be sure to click the subscribe button down below. Click the bell icon so you get a notification every time we post a video. Leave us a comment, let us know what you wanna see next. See you guys next time. Mm-hmm.